dominated by the crisis in the Middle East. The Daily Express says the world's <clears> holding <throat> its breath after Israel vowed revenge on Iran for its missile and drone attack on Saturday night. The Daily Mirror reports that G7 leaders have told Iran its attack on Israel has put the region on the brink of war. The Guardian focuses on the warning from Washington to Israel that the US military won't take part if it plans any retaliatory action against Iran. And The Sun claims the RAF's involvement in shooting down Iranian drones was the biggest air-to-air -air battle involving the UK since the Falklands War in 1982. Goodness me. And we're joined by the Mayor's Andrew Pearce, the Mirror's Kevin Maguire. I think, I think across the country, people watching our programme this morning will all be thinking, what next and yeah. how dangerous could this be? Yeah. yeah. Why do we end up fighting on Israel's behalf but we don't Ukraine's? Uh, that's one issue. Uh, last week it was all about pressure and condemnation of Israel over the killing of Palestinians, uh, talk of an em arms embargo, mm. and now we're fighting on their behalf. But it is, it's... You kind of, if a country is under attack, you will want to defend it. Yes. Uh, but you will not want to be sucked mm. into a huge Middle East war, but and that is the danger. It, it, it's, it's urging restraint now on Netanyahu. It was a strategic blunder of massive proportions by Iran because it achieved nothing militarily, it inflicted very little damage, uh, and now there is a... Just as international sport was fading for Israel because there was a perception that it was going too far, the conflict in Gaza. in Gaza. Now, America, everybody is rallying to its cause. Saudi Arabia, Britain was involved in repelling many of the drones, uh, and Netanyahu will feel emboldened all over again. You're rallying to Israel's cause when it's under attack. Yeah. But America has made very clear mm. it will not rally or take part if Israel decides to retaliate now against well, Iran. And, but now that it, would look like escalation. It's, and it's saying now. But at some point, I think Netanyahu will retaliate because he's been attacked. It, uh, it, it's the first attack by Iran on Iran. 300 missiles, yeah. drones. That was a big attack. But it, it, in a way, though, it was telegraphed way in advance was. by Iran. Notice was given so they could thankfully be shot down. It's almost playing a game, yeah. yes. because the, the Israelis killed top commanders of Iran in that consulate in Damascus, in Syria. That, that's always regarded... A consulate, an embassy, is regarded as your national soil. Yeah. So where there are embassies in, in London, mm. they are essentially treated as the national soil of the countries yeah. that have them. This embassies. wasn't an ordinary embassy, was it? No. No, no, of course it's not, and it's not an ordinary regime in Iran. I'm also there were very senior concerned revolutionary about, guard officers the, in that embassy. Yeah, it was a precision I'm cons targeted I'm cons raid. But it was still assassinations yeah. of Iranians. So they had to respond somehow, and it looks big, and they say they've succeeded. I can't see how Iran succeeded. No, there's no success Because at all. you launch all those... And they're saying it's over, but you can't trust them. Well, it's not over for either, is it? I mean, yeah. but you, you want it to calm down. Otherwise, apart from the bloodshed, it will cause economic chaos around the world because the straits of Hamouz will be shut... The immediately. oil price is already going up on the markets. And we know that the oil price has gone up, obviously, because of the anyway, Russia-Ukraine yeah. conflict. That feeds into of inflation course. here. Mm -hmm. It directly yeah. affects Absolutely. the cost of fuel mm -hmm. here. Everyone watching this program will be inflation. affected by what happened at the weekend. Exactly. Also, um, a, a dozen airlines have had to cancel or reroute mm -hmm. flights over the last two days. Qantas, Lufthansa, yeah. United, Air India. It is the biggest single disruption to air travel since the attack on the World Trade Centre back on September the 11th, 2001, according to the founder of Ops Group, which monitors yeah. airspace and airports, and Iran's airspace has not reopened since Saturday, according mm -hmm. to The Guardian. I mean, these things, quite apart from the absolute horror that everybody felt on Saturday night, are we on the brink yeah. Yeah. of something? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, people, people saying... Are we on the brink yeah. of World War well, Three I here? I think if they... But there are also practical effects yeah. that happen immediately. If they had not telegraphed it in advance, because, I mean, Rishi was chairing a COBRA meeting mm -hmm. at Number 10 to decide mm -hmm. to uh, use British planes in Cyprus to repel some of these Iranian missiles. The fact it was telegraphed in advance makes it... We're not there yet. But if they hadn't... If it had been a surprise attack... They'd already... Israel would have retaliated. There are, there are lots of positions, aren't there, which you can legitimately defend Israel from Iranian attacks, urge Israel to stop attacking Iran, and at the same time, 
put pressure on Israel mm -hmm. over what's happening in Gaza, just as you could be concerned for the deaths of Palestinians as much as you were concerned for the deaths of Israelis in the October the 7th pogrom. And at the same time, you can still mm -hmm. consider an arms embargo on Israel over what's happening in Gaza, if that is a war crime, and then Britain becomes well, we complicit in law. We don't know that it is yet. No, well, the government won't publish the legal advice, which I Lord... suspect it has legal advice saying well, we uh, it is there. Otherwise, I think it would have published it. We're mm -hmm. talking to Lord Cameron, um, the Foreign Secretary, after 8.30. Mm -hmm. um, he said last week that um, they weren't changing the arms embargo, yeah. and I would think he'll double down on that position today. But um, we were talking earlier about how politics affects foreign affairs, and um, it all starts with what's happening domestically. We know for Joe Biden, the last thing he wants sure. is conflict for him, because that makes it much harder for him in his own election this year. Mm. Um, and for other world leaders, they don't want escalation. But for Netanyahu, who has been in political trouble for months now, mm. who is on the back foot, this is now an opportunity to, to fight back. Does he, for domestic reasons, choose to escalate, to have a retaliatory strike against Iran to try to strengthen his own position in Israel. Does he need to strike back or does he just need the threat? And was that the intention of the attack on the Iranian consulate in Dam Damascus in Syria, knowing there would have to be a response? And you can say, I've got to defend you from the enemy without as well as the enemy right here on our borders, Hamas... Uh, in Gaza, Hezbollah in, in Lebanon. That's, that's his position, isn't it? Mm. I, I agree. I think he can't, in one way, he can't believe his luck. Yeah, he's a gift for him. May, maybe, maybe it was always the intention, but, yeah, because yeah, he's under huge pressure at home. Yeah. He is the hawk who has failed yeah. Israel. A... And our uh -huh. top guns, the RAF, yeah. helped to down those uh, drones and missiles that were launched from uh, Iran on Saturday night. At least four typhoon fighters took out weapons yeah. bound... For Israel, they were scrambled from RAF Akrotiri on Cyprus, and this was the biggest air-to-air -air battle involving the UK since the Falklands, and, 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 1982, you know, and, and this Andrew. This is how extraordinary it is. The pilots were wearing what they call bionic helmets, so to, to position their missiles to take out the Iranian drones, they didn't have to shift the air, the, their plane, they could just see it all from this bionic helmet, oh, which made it their response even quicker. Extraordinary how warfare is changing. But I, I don't think it was a, a, an air battle. I mean, they were just shooting things down mm -hmm. that were flying elsewhere and aimed at them. I think it was the right thing to do. Yeah. You're not going to, you're not going to stand by. And it, they, they were, it seems they were targeting military targets yeah. in Israel, but you don't know. They aren't going to go to Jerusalem or Tel Aviv mm -hmm. or Haifa or any of those big population centres. Should centers. the Prime Minister, if, if we are drawn into this, as we are, because those mm. RAF jets were involved Saturday night, should the Prime Minister today be in the House of Commons... He will be. ..explaining he to will MPs... Be. Should he then consult with MPs about any further action, or is this a decision the Prime Minister it, takes? It has to be operational because it can be so quickly. But he will he will bring he will involve the Labour leader on Privy Council terms. He will know what's going on. But he will I guarantee he'll make a statement in the Commons today, and he'll take questions as well. And, and, and quite right, if he it, will. Right, if God forbid it escalates and somehow some there is a war and Britain is dragged into a war against Iran, then he would he would have to go to the uh, well, you'd have House to get of Commons. Commons. Yeah, you'd he have would. To, you'd have, they'd have then to vote. You'd have to, but hopefully, it's not going to go down that road and sort of you know, pro national pride has settled with uh, in Iran now. They lost those people. The consulate was attacked. They now say, well, we've shown Israel. Well, in fact, they haven't. The Israelis have shown them that uh, their air defences work and they have allies who it, will this assist is, them. This is, this is about as much the Mullahs saying to their people in Iran, we have responded, mm -hmm. but they know that the response was... And as Ed says, it's so much about domestic politics. Yeah, yeah. We also have an election yeah. coming up. Yeah. So where does Sakir Starmer stand? Oh, I think, you, I think you won't Full get... Full square behind yeah. Israel. Yeah, which you won't get cause, a... Which will cause some concern <clears throat> for his party you, members. You, you won't get a cigarette paper between them. No. Uh, initially, he did that with Gaza, and I think it was a m mistake when the humanitarian uh, action was being taken, cutting off water, food and so on. I think that was a big mistake by him. But no, you won't see any difference. Now, if it was Jeremy Corbyn, when Labour was under different leadership... Uh, it would be uh, a, a very, critical. very different. Yeah. The focus shifts now because when it was about Israeli um, aggression, 
um, retaliation mm -hmm. in Gaza. This was posing a challenge for Keir Starmer. But once it becomes about Iran, mm. I mean, we actually had, you know, it's not a surprise RAF jets were um, working with the Americans and the Israelis, but you had Jordanian military um, activity yes. as yeah. part of this. Yeah. People often think, you know, uh, Israel versus the rest. It's not true. Yeah. And Iran is not a, um, a popular country with many um, other countries there. And if you can make Iran the aggressor, yeah. then that will help Keir Starmer but, and Rishi yeah, but, Sunak. But, 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 but Iran, <coughs> Iran isn't an Arab country. It's Persian. Uh, and the great Sunni-Shia split, it's Shia. Uh, Jordan gets a lot of US military aid. It's a, an ally of Israel, but just as Egypt is. And in fact, it's often overlooked in the what's that, like, humanitarian crisis in Gaza that um, Israel has a land border with Gaza too, and there's a crossing mm -hmm. point. It doesn't, uh, it's not opening it. Uh, and so it deserves criticism too. I mean, it's partly not opening it because it doesn't want to flood of ref refugees. It also gets huge military aid. I think in the Middle East, Egypt is second after, the, after Israel in the amount of um, US spending on, on defence for these countries. But no, you're right, Israel, Israel isn't, completely, isn't isolated in this uh, at all.